Thanks to Mel Science for sponsoring today's video. In recent years, researchers have documented a number of weird atmospheric phenomena on Earth that were previously unproven or even unknown. There are transient luminous events like red sprites, blue jets, gigantic jets and elves. There are noctilucent clouds and rarely seen variants of familiar phenomena like green lightning and red auroras. These are just a few of the incredible occurrences we've been able to observe and verify. Yet, despite amazing advances in our technology and research capabilities, there are still phenomena that are almost completely outside our ability to prove them. Of these, none is stranger and more terrifying than ball lightning, an alleged electrical occurrence so mind-boggling that it sounds, well, made up. Ball lightning has been reported so many times and received so much scientific scrutiny that it occupies an unusual place between science and folklore. But unlike most myths, ball lightning has a mounting body of evidence that suggests we should not only take its existence seriously, but we might already have proof that it does. So what is ball lightning? How are scientists attempting to reproduce it in laboratories? And if it is a real phenomenon, as many experts believe, why is it so difficult to prove? I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum. Join me today as we look at the fascinating history of ball lightning encounters, examine some of the most intriguing new theories out there, and learn about stunning laboratory experiments that are attempting to get to the bottom of one of science's strangest unsolved mysteries. For centuries, accounts of ball lightning have come from all over the world. The stories vary, but many agree on certain details. The phenomenon appears as a bright burning orb, sometimes golf ball sized and sometimes much larger. It's usually white or blue, but can also be red, orange or yellow. The phenomenon is said to last between one and several seconds, float in a slow path at times changing direction, sometimes even erratically, and has been alleged to pass through walls and windows unscathed. According to some reports, the ball lightning fizzles, in others it explodes violently causing severe damage, leaving behind an odour that has been described as sulphurous. At its most destructive, ball lightning has been reported to maim and kill people, and to blast apart heavy walls doors and ships. Now on this channel we don't accept anecdotal evidence as proof, no matter how compelling. Only observation, control testing and repeatability can confirm a phenomenon scientifically. So with that in mind, let's look at a few of the alleged ball lightning encounters I find most intriguing. In 1739, the Catherine and Mary were sailing down the Gulf Coast of Florida when it ran into a deadly thunderstorm. According to an eyewitness, a large ball of fire fell from the element and split our mast in 10,000 pieces, killed one man, another had his hand carried off, and had it not been for the violent rains, our sails would have been a blast of fire. That's quite a story, but it gets weirder. In 1753, Georg Richmann, a renowned professor and electrical researcher, was attending a conference in St. Petersburg when he saw a storm approaching. Bringing an engraver to record his observations, he hurried to conduct a kite experiment like the one Benjamin Franklin had performed the previous year. As reported afterwards by the engraver, Richmann was conducting the experiment when a fiery blue orb crawled down the string, fatally striking him and knocking the engraver unconscious. The reported autopsy found a coin-sized red mark on the professor's forehead and injuries consistent with electrocution. But maybe the most compelling eyewitness account comes from 1963, when R. C. Jennison, a researcher at the University of Kent, was flying late at night from New York to Washington. Jennison was sitting in the cabin shortly after midnight when the plane became enveloped in a bright electrical discharge. Within seconds, 
a bright glowing sphere about 20 centimeters in diameter emerged from the pilot's cabin and traveled the length of the aircraft. In 1969, Jennison published his observations in precise detail in the pages of Nature magazine. Due to credible reports like Jennison's, scientists have taken the phenomenon seriously and put forward numerous models to explain it. One theory proposes that ball lightning could be a hallucination triggered by the magnetic field close to a lightning strike. Citing similar hallucinations experienced during epileptic seizures, this theory suggests that ball lightning could be a figment of the stimulated occipital lobe. However, if true, it would seemingly contradict reported damages caused by ball lightning, such as the death of Georg Richmann. Another hypothesis proposes that ball lightning is a contained plasma reaction, like St. Elmo's fire, the phenomenon famously observed on the masts of ships, when the voltage between the air and the ground is great enough to break the air molecules into highly excited particles. According to this theory, the plasma in ball lightning becomes a self-contained bubble that behaves as a soliton, a self-reinforced wave that maintains its shape and moves at constant velocity. Don't worry if you find this confusing, we're touching on a pretty complicated subject that even researchers are still struggling to understand. One of the most promising hypotheses was proposed by John Abrahamson and James Dinnis at the University of Canterbury Christchurch in the year 2000. This model proposes that a powerful positive lightning strike can vaporize molecules in soil, causing energized nanoparticles that then react with oxygen in the air to produce light and heat. And remarkably, this model is supported by a strange incident that occurred 10 years ago in Lanchu, China. Remember when I said that there weren't any verified recordings of ball lightning? Well, that may not be entirely true. In July 2012, researchers from Northwest Normal University had set up spectrometers to record ordinary lightning when a powerful lightning strike produced a glowing white orb. The orb had an estimated glow 5 meters across, which turned red as it traveled for 10 meters before ascending into the air. All this was recorded with high-speed video, which sadly hasn't been made public, and a spectrometer reading, which has. The spectrometer confirmed emission lines from silicon, calcium, and iron, all common in soil. So, if this observed phenomenon was in fact ball lightning, as it appears, then it adds strong evidence to support the vaporized silicon hypothesis. But the model doesn't account for certain behaviors described in ball lightning encounters, such as the ability to pass through solid matter. So, what does this mean? Well, Either those accounts are wrong, or ball lightning could actually be a collection of separate phenomena. In addition to proposing theoretical models, scientists have attempted to reproduce ball lightning in laboratories with incredible results. One experiment at the Max Planck Institute reported producing a ball lightning type effect when researchers discharged a high voltage capacitor into liquid water. In 2006, Researchers at Tel Aviv University conducted an experiment by pointing a microwave drill made up of a magnetron and a microwave beam at a strip of solid silicon. When the researchers pulled the beam away, the drag produced a tiny ball of plasma, nearly identical in appearance to reports of ball lightning. An astonishing result, to be sure. But is this laboratory-produced phenomenon the same as the ones reported in nature? It's very possible, but as of right now, we simply don't know. Another experiment, conducted in 2018, came to even more stunning conclusions. Using advanced experimental engineering, physicists successfully created a Shankar Skyrimian, a quasi-particle that is like a tangled three-dimensional magnetic field. Without getting too complicated, what the researchers did was apply an external magnetic field to a system of rubidium atoms near absolute zero. The magnetic field controlled the atoms in such a way that they all spun facing the same direction on the knot surface, while twisting unusually on the inside. In other words, 
the magnetic field maintained a stable spherical configuration, able to do things like squish or deform while still retaining its essential properties. This discovery could have major implications for quantum computing, but researchers also believe the synthetic magnetic field they created models the expected electromagnetic field of ball lightning. This theory will require a lot of follow-up research, but it's a promising discovery that could explain some of ball lightning's alleged characteristics, such as the ability to pass through solid barriers. So there we have it, a survey of the incredible history of ball lightning encounters, as well as the cutting edge research that has come tantalizingly close to proving it. So what do you think? Do you find any of these theories convincing? Have you, or anyone you know, ever experienced an encounter with something that looked like ball lightning? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. I also love that as humans, we are so naturally inquisitive and curious. I remember when I was young, my parents got me a chemistry set, and I was instantly hooked and intrigued. Experimenting with it really helped me develop my love of science today. Mel Science approached me with their kids' STEM, physics, and chemistry sets aimed at small children all the way to teenagers, and I was genuinely impressed with what they offer. It's a monthly subscription, and each category has 24 sets in all, with two to three fun experiments in each one, meaning you'll get a new box every month for two years. I can really see it being a great tool for helping your child develop a love of science, and this can also be a great opportunity to spend meaningful time together as a family. It comes with everything you need, apart from common household items, and is completely safe and thoroughly tested. So, if you know someone that could benefit from the gift of science, click my link in the description below and use the code ASTRUM at checkout, and you'll get 50% off the price of the first month. Thanks for watching, liking, and sharing. And thanks to my patrons and members for supporting the channel. Want to support too and have your name added to this list? Find the links in the description below. All the best and see you next time.